Okay, now we're going to look at the Torricelli theorem. It's a special application of the Bernoulli equation. Let's write that there again. So we have uh, pressure 1 plus 1 half rho v squared. Let's label that as a 1 plus uh, rho gh1 equals pressure 2 plus 1 half rho v2 squared plus rho gh2. So assume that this is open to the atmosphere so that the pressure 1 here does equal pressure 2 here. So then we can kind of x off our pressure 1 on this and pressure 2. Now we assume that the velocity coming out of here is quite large but very, very small at the very top of this liquid here. So we're going to approximate velocity here to be 0. So this term here can cross off. Okay, and uh, we need to decide where our origin is in this case. Why don't we make the origin where the water comes out here. So we're going to make, I'll put a little star there. So that means uh, zero height is going to be right there, and then H1 would be there. So H2 is zero, so that can cross off. So basically the Torricelli theorem is uh, rho GH equals one-half rho V squared. Now, of course, the rows would cross off. And we get a very simple equation then, the G times H1 equals one-half V squared. So it's nice and easy the way that it crosses off like that and gives you a nice easy equation to plug into. Now let's talk about the Bernoulli effect or the Venturi effect. Uh, the idea is as the velocity of a fluid increases, pressure actually goes down. So if we just look at velocity here and pressure, when the velocity of a fluid goes up, uh, the pressure goes down. And of course vice versa, when the velocity of a fluid goes down, pressure goes up. So using the continuity equation here, we have a opening here of a certain diameter. It looks like A1 is uh, larger than A2. So remember that we have A1, V1 equals A2, V2. I'll put vector hats in those rooms so that we know those are velocities and not volumes. So the velocity at A1 is going to be low, and the velocity at A2 is going to be much faster because our area has gone down. So we have a, a manometer tube here, and the pressure of the fluids are being measured. So the pressure of the fluid here is pushing down into this tube. I'll just put an arrow this way. Let's call that pressure one. And then we have another pressure from this side of the fluid chamber pushing this way. Okay, and we clearly see that the this is a mercury tube here, and this is the fluid here. We clearly see that the mercury is being pushed downwards more this direction. So the pressure of the fluid at this direction is definitely higher than what it is over there. So it kind of gives you an idea of the, the Venturi effect. This is also how wind tunnels work too. So as the velocity speeds up, the pressure actually goes down. Okay, our last thing to consider are the U-tubes or the manometers. Let's say I've got a substance, uh, like we can just call this water here. And on this side, I pile maybe some oil on there, and we're going to put pressure down on this side. And this, the original water would have been here, but it gets moved up a little bit because of the oil on this side. So what can we do with this? So we have a pressure from the atmosphere pushing down here on this side and equal on this side here. So because both of those are equal and they cancel out, we don't have to worry about that okay, in our equation. But what we need to look at is the barrier here between the oil and the water. There's a certain height, okay, we can call that length L here, okay, and then of course there's a certain height of water, okay, that's actually above that level here. When we go to this level here, there, the pressures have to be equal to each other. Okay, so the pressure of the water has to equal the pressure of the oil. Okay, so that's going to be the rho of the water times gravity G times the H. Okay, now we're not solving for that particular H right now. We're solving for this H right here equals rho of the oil 
multiplied by G uh, multiplied by that L. Okay, so I'm actually, again, finding, it, it says H there, but I'm really finding this H right here, the height of the water. Okay, that's above that position there. To find this H, I can take L minus this H here and then find that H there. So I know it's a little bit confusing there. But uh, if I know this L here, then I can figure out what my H would be for right here. And then I can calculate the difference between those two. Okay, now in part two, what if I blow some air over this side of the tube and I put a protecting shield against this one here, but still allows it to be open to the atmosphere there. Okay, well, we're going to have pressure of atmosphere here, but I'm going to lower the pressure here. We can do a quick Bernoulli's equation, okay, to find out how. Okay, so we have a, a pressure 1 plus 1 half rho V squared plus rho G H. Okay, equals a constant. Okay, that's for um, uh, the Bernoulli equation, and that constant would be all of these again except twos. But we don't have any height difference, right? So we can kind of X that off there. Okay, so in this particular case, we are going to start without moving at all. Okay, so we're just going to have a pressure one and then plus a zero for that equals a constant. So what will our equation look like? So it's going to be pressure one is equal to pressure two plus one half rho v squared. Okay, so what this means is this is the pressure of air without any motion at all. And then when you get motion, you're going to actually uh, have to subtract off, okay, this particular value from the pressure. Okay, but it's added to this side of the equation for that reason. So the new pressure, P2, is going to be the original pressure of the atmosphere, and they call that P naught. Okay, minus one half rho v squared. Okay, so that's how that actually works. So how does our equation down here actually change? Well, on this side, I'm going to add a P naught minus one half rho v squared plus, and then on this side here, I'm going to have plus a P naught. Now, how does this work? Well, this is atmospheric pressure only because there's the protecting on this. The pressure on this side has decreased by the one half rho v squared because now we are blowing air across it. Okay, then what I can do that is cross off my P naughts. Okay, and then I can solve for my L there. Okay, so that you get understanding of the L. Okay, here is given that I can find my height H here. Okay, or if I want, I can blow air across this until my heights are the same, and then I can solve for V in this equation. So it all depends on, you know, what you're asked to find uh, using the manometer. Okay, and that's how you do uh, U-tubes with or without blowing air on them, and uh, that's it for fluid dynamics.